That same day my cousin died, I couldn't tame it with meds They asked me why I'ma be in 10 years, shit, I said the feds Hey yo, thanks for tuning in to The Source, your source for celebrity news Check this out as you may or may not have already heard, Chicago rapper Lil Durk has been arrested in Florida on way to for higher charges. According to the feds, Lil Durk along with five other members of his OTF, aka Only the Family Collective, conspired to murk Quando Rondo in retaliation for the murking of King Von back in 2020. But the assassination attempt went left and he accidentally ended up deleting Quando Rondo's 24-year-old cousin, Savaya Robinson, instead. Now, Little Dirk's recent arrest stems from that pow powin that occurred on August 19th, 2022, when gunmen rolled up on a gas station and sprayed up Quando Rondo and his entourage in the Beverly Grove neighborhood of Los Angeles at around 5.30 p.m. Now, even though the hitters missed Quando Rondo, unfortunately, they did hit his cousin. Check this out. Right now, the search is on for three people who police say shot at a Savannah rapper killing a member of his entourage. It happened in Los Angeles, and cameras captured the aftermath. Shots fired. A fight taken to the streets in this chaotic scene. The ending of a shooting that started in Los Angeles, California. Sheriff's deputies pulling out a man who had been shot in an SUV. Rondo, a passenger in that car, frantic at the site. It all started at this mobile gas station at 5.30 Friday evening. LAPD says witnesses heard multiple gunshots, then watched a couple cars zoom off. Three people in one car shot at this black Cadillac Escalade. It's unclear if those inside shot back. Can I get, can I get some space, please? It ended at Santa Monica Boulevard. Deputies found it peppered with bullet holes and a shattered window. One man inside, a member of Rondo's entourage, had been shot. The 23-year-old was taken to the hospital where he died. A scene left with remnants of the fight, shoes left in the street, doors flung open. The suspects still on the run. We still don't know what spurred it all, but LAPD says it started at a gas pump. Victim vehicle, uh, they pulled up, they were pumping gas, and it looks like they probably finished pumping gas, and the suspects uh, approached from the alley, got out of the car, and started shooting at those victims. Investigators are still trying to piece together details, but... Now, after Savaya got murked, Quando Rondo jumped online and he was like, listen, all of this murking has got to stop. And I'm not even looking to get get back because trying to get get back is only going to land me in jail. And then 10, 20, 30 years from now, I'm going to look back and be like, yo, what did I do that for? I ain't, bro. I don't care what nobody think no more. If you slap me in front of everybody, I'm not about to come kill you, bro. Because once I kill you and I go to prison and 15 years pass and I'm in a damn cage, everybody who said I went out bad for getting slapped and didn't do nothing is going to eventually grow up, get older and say he went out bad for killing forget for about a slap. Bro, I understand that. Very good advice, Quando. But unfortunately, five members of Little Dirk's OTF crew, along with Little Dirk, may not have taken heed to your advice. Because the other day, five members of the OTF crew, along with Little Dirk, were arrested for allegedly conspiring to delete Quando Rondo and actually deleting his cousin. Now, after being cuffed up by the feds, Little Dirk was taken directly to jail in Broward County, Florida, and is awaiting transfer to the U.S. Marshals to be sent back to the jurisdiction in L.A. where the pow powing originally occurred. Likewise, the five other men that police allege are Little Dirk's co-conspirators, Kavon London Grant, DeAndre Dontrell Wilson, Keith Jones, David Brian Lindsay, and Asa Houston, were arrested in the Chicago area and appeared at the Dirksen U.S. Courthouse before U.S. Magistrate Judge Jeffrey Gilbert who ordered that all five defendants be held in custody pending further proceedings. Now, according to the indictment that was filed against the five men, each of them is being charged with conspiracy to commit murder for hire resulting in death and the use of a machine gun resulting in death. And I think that it's safe to say that Little Dirk will also be charged with the same thing plus maybe a little bit more seeing that they think that he's the alleged ringleader. Source, can we please see a clip of Quando Rondo reacting when he found out that his cousin wasn't gonna make it? Alright, 
So in an affidavit filed with the courts, FBI Special Agent Sarah Cochran alleged that Little Dirk put a bag on Quando Rondo's head after Little Tim murked King Vaughn in 2020. According to the affidavit, which was signed, sealed, and delivered by Cochran around August 18, 2022, Dirk and his alleged co-conspirators learned that Quando Rondo was staying at a hotel in Los Angeles. The next day, Dirk's five friends traveled from Chicago to Los Angeles for the purpose of murking Quando. Federal prosecutors also allege that the five members of OTF used two vehicles and worked in tandem to track, stalk, and attempt to unalive Quando. And when they got him in their sights, they fired at least 18 rounds at Quando's vehicle, striking and unaliving Quando's cousin. Now, based on the investigation and according to the FBI, evidence shows that Dirk ordered Quando's hit and ultimately paid for the alleged co-conspirators to travel from Chicago to Los Angeles on the day before the Merkin. Around the time that the flights were purchased, records show that a phone number associated with Little Dirk texted a co-conspirator, quote, don't book no flights under no names involved with me, end quote. All right, so the FBI then goes on to say that Little Dirk flew on a private jet from Miami to Los Angeles with one of his co-conspirators, Kavon London Grant. And when he got to LA, Grant used Dirk's credit card to book a room at the Sheraton Universal Hotel, where the five-man alleged hit team stayed the night before they tracked down Quando Rondo. The FBI also says that Grant purchased ski masks for each of the hitters to use to commit the Merkin on Little Dirk's credit card too. Now, after executing the warrants, the FBI learned that Little Dirk was trying to get out of Dodge because he was booked on at least three international flights scheduled to leave the United States on Thursday. So they swooped in and when Little Dirk arrived near one of the departing airports, he was arrested on site. Now, I know, y'all are out there like, yo, Sauce, the last time we saw Little Dirk, he converted to Islam, he was praying in a mosque, and he was over there reading his Quran. How did it come to this? Listen, I'm going to tell you, but we got to go back to the beginning. All right, once upon a time, there was a rapper named Little Dirk who lived in Chicago. And while he was in Chicago, he started making mixtapes, and he started getting a little traction. So, after a while, he formed the crew, OTF, which stands for Only the Family, in 2010. Now, Little Dirk's crew also included rappers such as King Vaughn, the late OTF Newski, Booker 600, OTF Boonie Mo, OTF DD, and Duty Luck. All right, so a few years later, Kentrell Deshaun Golden, also known professionally as Young Boy Never Broke Again or NBA Young Boy, started his label, which included artists like Quando Rondo and No Cap in 2015. Now, between 2015 and 2017, everything seemed to be all good in the hood between these two rap crews and Dirk and NBA Youngboy, who were the most popular rappers in their respective camps, actually seemed to be fans of one another. The two hip-hop phenoms even released music together. For example, in 2018, Little Dirk praised NBA Youngboy in a podcast, and the two of them even did an Instagram Live together. But in 2019, Little Dirk and NBA Youngboy started having issues with one another, thanks to Little Dirk's protege, Chicago rapper King Vaughn. Now, in March of 2019, King Vaughn jumped on Instagram and started throwing a little shade at NBA. As a matter of fact, during one particular live, King Vaughn alleged that NBA Youngboy wasn't really as gangster as he tried to sound in his music. Talking crazy on this one. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. He ain't even like that. Oh. On his ass, man. <laughs> on his ass. All cap. You got cap in your raps. Now, as you can imagine, NBA Youngboy was not pleased with the fact that King Vaughn was running around trying to question his street credibility, but NBA Youngboy let it ride. That is, until King Vaughn jumped on Instagram Live again and called NBA Youngboy a biatch about a month later. But after he threw the shade on Youngboy, he turned around and tried to pull it back and was like, nah, nah, I was just joking. Me and Youngboy is like brothers. But after that, the gloves came off and Little Dirk and NBA Youngboy started going back and forth on social media and also going back and forth with the diss tracks. The beef between NBA Youngboy and Little Dirk is about to turn deadly fast. After the release of NBA Youngboy's promotional single, Bring the Hook, Youngboy would take shots at both O'Block and King Vaughn. Youngboy would rap, Nigga, this is sweet, gang. Oh, that piggy, hold up. Man, what they told us, that little boogie. 
Later releasing an IG post to go along with the song. It would be posted up against money spelling both. You're gonna die and stay safe. This would prompt an obvious response from Lil Durk clapping back with a picture of his own money spelling hurry up this ass up with the caption colorblind. Taking an obvious diss at Youngboy's recent album, Colors. Now, after going back and forth with a flurry of diss songs and social media disses, things seem to quiet down. And when Lil Durk did interviews like the one that he did on DJ Academics, he tried to play it nonchalant like there really wasn't any beef. In terms of trying to solve something, but if, if it is something that could be ever solved, I'm just reading. You ain't talking. I'm just reading. Or if there's something that you guys could ignore each other, because not everything can be solved. Then why don't we try? Say what? What's the issue with you and your boy? Like, how did it start? I, because this I really, I'm gonna be honest with you. I really don't. I really don't know. But that didn't last long. Because soon, videos began circulating online of King Vaughn chilling with one of NBA Youngboy's baby moms, Jania. Now, soon after that, rumors began circulating that Vaughn and Jania were dating, but Vaughn was like, nah, 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 we just making music. But if you know NBA Youngboy, then you know darn well that he doesn't play when it comes to his 50 million baby mamas, including Jania. So, a few hours later, NBA Youngboy jumped online and posted a picture of him with his son with a caption that said, I'ma have my son F your daughter since you trolling so much, biatch. But NBA Youngboy wasn't done. He was like, yo, I'm getting ready to hit this ninja with the double whammy. Because shortly after that, he jumped online and announced that he was quote unquote working with King Vaughn's ex boo, Asian Doll. He also dropped a quick snippet of the track that him and Asian Doll were supposedly working on in the studio, which seemed to ruffle King Vaughn's feathers. Because right after he posted it, King Vaughn jumped on Twitter and wrote, that new ish y'all got is ish. And then he turned around and dropped another post that was like, I'll post some ish on this biatch that'll make your MF a cry and stop claiming his kids and all type of ish. Okay, so after that, even though both sides publicly tried to front like there was no real beef, NBA Youngboy released a song called Dead Trolls in September of 2020, which many believe was aimed at King Vaughn. And in the song, NBA Youngboy was like, tell that boy I'ma see him ninja, tell him I said don't come fish around this lake, biatch, that's real ninja, seven more is in my hometown, tell him biatches I did that, soon as the other boy touched down, I'ma be pushing his wig back. Now, after that, things started to escalate online because NBA Youngboy's crew and King Vaughn's crew started going back and forth on social media and Quando Rondo jumped in the mix and he started saying things to King Vaughn and then when King Vaughn responded, Quando Rondo's boy Little Tim jumped in the mix also and he was like, ninjas from Chirac better chill on my ninja Quando or else you're gonna be seeing smoke and halos. Okay, so even though things were getting heated online, King Vaughn dismissed the beef between him and Quando Rondo by saying, nah, nah, that's just the internet. When he went and did an interview on DJ Academic Show, check this out. They be saying that a lot. It's like we got the same interests and then you know how the internet will try to make it. Don't tell me I got problems over girls. No, it's the internet, gang. Alright, so if you know anything about King Vaughn, then you know that King Vaughn has a history of throwing out like a death threat and then being like, nah, 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 I was just playing. Alright, so at this time, King Vaughn was a rising star in Chicago's drill music scene who is known for his storytelling, his aggressive rap style, and for having real life connections to O Block and all of their various street conflicts in Chicago. Now, Vaughn had also built up a rep for being with some people like Trap Ross called Hip Hop's first serial killer. Because unlike some rappers who just talk-ish, a lot of people say King Vaughn really lived it. As a matter of fact, according to Trap Ross, King Vaughn was allegedly associated with over 10 moiters, including the deaths of King Doc, Dirty Rel, Model, P5, Little James, Little Mark, Malcolm, notorious female Chicago hitter K.I., Can't Get Right, and an Atlanta blood named Tariq. Now, just so we're clear and fair, some people say that Trap Ross has a tendency to put a little too much sauce on King Vaughn's body count, and he often attributes more bodies to King Vaughn than are actual and factual. Now, personally, I heard that the number is closer to like 7, 8 than like 9, 10. But what do I know? I'm not out there murking people. If you're a King Vaughn fan, you're gonna wanna watch this. Trap Lord Ross uploaded an almost four hour documentary on King Vaughn. I'm about to summarize it so you don't have to watch four hours. Bro, why do y'all keep telling me chop chop? Y'all need to stop, stop. I'm working as fast as I can. Davon Bedden was born in Chicago August 9th, 1994. 
The Barton Elementary School was influenced in gang life early from home. His dad, Walter Bennett, aka Silk, was very known but in and out of jail, which left Vaughn to be raised by his mom. Sadly, by the age of 11, Vaughn's father's life was taken away by a sniper. This affected Vaughn psychologically to the point that he couldn't even sleep. He ended up following his father's footsteps and getting his first blicky at the age of 10, and getting involved in the streets as early as the 4th grade. Vaughn first joined a local crew called the King Ward. In 2018, King Vaughn would move to the most dangerous part of Chicago, Parkway Gardens, which was rarely investigated by police and very neglected by state politicians. Vaughn would then transfer to High Park Academy, school had allies and enemies including FBG Duck, but we'll talk more about him later. D. Herbo allegedly confirmed that Vaughn would bring weapons to school at age 13, starting the trend for everyone else to bring them. King Vaughn even allegedly did a shooting at prom, and all this trouble would get Vaughn locked up multiple times. King Vaughn's first arrest was at age 16 for armed robbery. Then he would get arrested again for the same crime. But even though he was in and out of jail, the next time he would get arrested would be for something way worse than armed robbery. If you're a fan of King Vaughn, make sure you guys like, share, and follow for more. A 15-year-old gangster disciple by the name of Tuka passed away on 63rd Street by a masked man. Now for decades, BDs dissed Tuka, and because of his passing, the GDs renamed their block Tukaville in honor of him. And no official arrests were made, but people speculate that it was O.D. Perry who did it, because he was known for carrying a revolver, and that's the exact reason why Tuka passed. But later that same year, he passed away to revenge, and allegedly the one behind it was a girl named K.I. And after O.D. Perry passed, she would post on social media holding the same revolver that he was famously known to have. This would put a huge target on her back from Oblock. While Vaughn was still locked up, two more friends of his would pass, Platoon and Sherwood Liggins. This would make him want revenge and get involved in the gang war. And on April 28th, 2012, King Vaughn would be accused of his first hit. Calling Vaughn a serial killer and he's this guy that's beloved and a lot of people have said to me, they say to me, they're like, oh, what about his kids that got here about him being a serial killer? But it's like, bro, what about Vaughn's music where he's talking about he's smoking Tuka, yeah, yeah. he's smoking females, shooting all the females in here, talking about KI. Like I see a video, uh, a picture going around on Reddit of P5's daughter with a t-shirt saying like, I love you, daddy. This is the guy that Vaughn allegedly oh, this guy's face off. Yeah, and like, I'm trying to be like fair and balanced when I make my documentaries. But I think something that's interesting is like, when people are like, yo, Vaughn never did any of that. It's all cap. It's like, bro, you're gaslighting the victims of the people that Vaughn actually did. Yeah. If you're looking for somebody one day, you better look for their ass every day. Motherfucking oh, leave you, me alive. I'm innocent, Vaughn. <laughs> so you was, in, you was in jail for two murders? Yeah, one murder and two attempts. I'm finna rob this nigga. Was it ever a money thing for you? Like, nah, it was just fun, really. Like, if he wanted yeah. you out of there, he'll go do it himself on feet by himself. Man, he killed black people and bragged about it. In 2012, everybody couldn't hang with Vine. Something was wrong with him. That's not human, man. You're not regular, man. Nigga was the devil, man. <laughs> that nigga was the devil, man. Fuck Tuka, let me get it now. Uh, Vine was different. Like, when shit happened to Vaughn, ain't nothing happening to Vaughn, cause he different. Like he was different from like he was always on a different type of timing for real. They they say he was from 63rd. Anybody see that nigga tussy? I got some money on this shit. All right, so now you see how the big homies, Little Dirk and NBA Young Boys beef trickled down to the little homies, King Vaughn and Quando, which set the stage for the inevitable Merkin that's getting ready to happen. All right, so Source, can you please fast forward a few months to November 6th, 2020? All right, so it's 2020 now, and King Vaughn and Quando Rondo just happen to be in the same city, which is Atlanta, at the same time. Now, they don't know it yet, but in a few minutes, one of them is getting ready to be murked. Okay, so here's what happened. King Vaughn was in Atlanta throwing an album release party for his debut album, Welcome to O Block, which was released on October 30th, 2020. This drop, which was his first album drop, was a nod to the area around 64th Street and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive on the south side of Chicago where he was raised. Now, despite the fact that King Vaughn's music has universal appeal and is mad popular in Atlanta, he was mad far away from his stronghold, which is the Parkway Gardens Apartments on Chicago's south side. It's your boy King Vaughn, you're not tuned in to a new episode of Welcome to My Neighborhood on Silver TV. This is the area, so this play a um, big part of my life. Like, we out here, everything you need and shit, we just ain't had too much. Come <laughs> <laughs> on, they know it. Huh? Ain't nobody better than him. Yeah. Yeah. Where are you from? 64th and King Drive, Chicago, Parkway Gardens. 
Growing up in Chicago, what was that like for you? Can you paint that picture for us? Regular shit, going to school. Ain't a lot of money, but you know, still got love, shoes and clothes, man. Ain't too much. My mom was there. No, no daddy. Uh, how big was gang activity back then? Same as it is, man. I just woke up one day, I was bad as hell. I don't know what the fuck. I, I was just getting good A's and B's. I don't know why. I don't know. <laughs> Having a possession of a gun. And then they charged me to can I just get out full because I'm first three minutes to attempt. I know music is something recent in your life. Yeah. But did you do anything music wise while you were locked up? Yeah, I used to be singing songs on the door and shit, being on the door. And listen, you know, on the phone, dirty, listening, rap this shit, listen to this shit. Okay, so after the party was done, mad people from the party decided to gather outside in the parking lot of another spot called the Monaco Hookah Lounge. Now, unbeknownst to King Vaughn, Quando Rondo and his mans and them just so happened to be parked in that parking lot too. Alright, so this is what I'm going to ask you to do. Pretend that your screen has like split screen, because I'm going to tell you about two things that are going on at once. Alright, Quando Rondo is over there in the car with his man. But his man is like, yo, you getting out? And he's like, nah, I'm mad tired. So his man is like, all right, you going to stay and sleep in the car? He's like, yeah. He's like, all right, so before you go to sleep in the car, let me move the car right quick. So Quando Rondo gets out of the car for a minute. Now, just as Quando Rondo gets out of the car for a minute, King Vaughn spots Quando Rondo. But Quando Rondo doesn't see King Vaughn. And even though he sees a few people out in the parking lot, he still doesn't realize that it's King Vaughn. So, realizing that he has the advantage, King Vaughn rolls up on Quando Rondo and hits him with the two-piece. So now, these two are down on the ground going at it. And Quando Rondo's man, who was parking the car, Little Tum, realizes what's going on. So, he jumps out of the car, and this dude just starts busting shots. And guess who gets hit? King Vaughn. Pow, pow, you're gone. In newly surfaced surveillance video, a large group of people are gathered outside of the hookah bar when Vaughn, dressed in all white, saunters up to another man who appears to be Quando and punches him square in the face. From there, chaos ensues and gunshots ring out just moments later. Two off-duty police officers who were working security at the hookah bar and another on-duty police officer who was also working nearby attempted to intervene and began firing their weapons. As Vaughn's manager and 100K Management Senior Vice President Jameson Francois explained, those shots that was fired from the individuals that shot Vaughn and myself was the only shots fired from those individuals. Every other shot was coming from authorities. They started shooting everywhere. So when you see everybody taking cover, they wasn't taking cover away from the shooter from Vaughn. They was taking cover because they didn't know where the shots was going from. After the gunfire ceased, two people were dead. Vaughn was rushed to the hospital in critical condition and two others were injured, including Francois and 22-year-old Timothy Leakes, who was charged with the murder on Saturday, November 8th, while recovering at Grady Hospital. Vaughn had just released his latest album, Welcome to O'Block, on October 30th when he was killed. All right, so now that you heard it from me, let's hear what Quando Rondo had to say about the incident during an interview that he did with Angela Yee. In my mind, I'm just thinking regular in reality, like you would think. I'm about to let these people walk past me. I'm not about to try to go through these people or nothing like that. Next thing you know, a nigga hit me. Man, like, I lied to you not, man. I lied to you not. It's like I had an out-of-body experience. Quando Rondo also says that he didn't even know that it was King Vaughn that got pow-powed until the very next day. I never in life, man, never in life had words with them. I didn't know this was him. And, ma'am, I swear to God, this is on neighborhood crip, ma'am. I did not know that was him till the next day. Now, after King Vaughn was murked in the middle of the street, they picked up little Tim for the shooting because the whole thing was caught on surveillance tape. But Quando Rondo walked free because he told the cops, he was like, yo, it was self-defense. Now, ever since Quando Rondo walked away from the incident scot-free, mad people have tried to murk Quando Rondo. So much so that it got to the point where, like, he was trying to do a concert in Georgia, and the whole state of Georgia was like, nah, son, you can't come here, because we got to protect our citizens. But we begin tonight with breaking news in the case of Quando Rondo. The Chatham County Assistant District Attorney filing a new motion today to ban him from the county until he goes to trial. In today's filing, the state lays out a number of shitting incidents where Rondo was believed to be the target. Now, the most recent was this one on September 20th on Skidaway Road. And according to prosecutors, a group of people shot at one another. That includes Quando. The state says nearly 30 shell casings were recovered and nearly four firearms were used, including an AR-15 assault rifle. Two people were shot, but they survived. 
Now the DA's office wants him prohibited from Chatham County until he goes to trial on charges that he violated Georgia's Street Gang Terrorism Act. They say that his mere presence poses a danger to the citizens of the county. Now, when DJ Academics asked Little Dirk about the whole King Vaughn situation, he was like, yo, it's effed up when a real gangster gets taken out by a nerd. That incident, which was very unfortunate at the end of the day, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's changed everybody's lives irreparably. That shit fucked up on your life. When a real gangster get took out by like a, like a nerd type. Obviously more people love Vaughn, but you know, in that situation, which was a street situation, it's a real situation. Like, it, but, but I think you that anybody would have done the same thing. Quando Rondo seemingly responds to Lil Durk's nerd comment. Quando Rondo responded, the nerds got seven of them last year, Erk. Y'all just be telling on yourself. He just made everything hot, but he just snitched on his entire crew. Mister, I regret putting my business on the internet. So he admitted his group killed seven people last year. When I tell you this generation is different, dudes snitch on themselves more than anything. And I bet he ain't have ish to do with one of them. Imagine being a homicide detective in this day and age. They don't even gotta do no investigating. All they gotta do is follow rappers on Twitter. Seven of what? I don't wish jail on nobody, but these idiots got it coming. This is coming from the same guy who witnessed his friend get killed and was screaming and crying. Then he claimed he wasn't gang gang no more. Now he online bragging about murders. But he's snitching for the shine. Where the patience at? All right, so for a while, things were looking really, really bad. But then something in the atmosphere changed. Because Little Dirk became a Muslim, Quando Rondo became a Muslim, an NBA young boy jumped online and said that he was finna become a Mormon. So then everybody was like, hooray. Now that these dudes have found a little faith, perhaps now the beef will be squashed. Okay, so you were like, Yeah, like my daddy a Muslim. Like he in the feds, but he like the preacher for the Muslim. When I was going to church, and I used to ask like, uh, like you know, Jesus was on the wall. And I'm like, this him? And they'd be like, no, nah, this ain't the real him. It's just what they... And I'm like, wait, I'm, a, I'm confused now. You know what I'm saying? So I never really believed in Jesus from the get-go. And then I just have a conversation with my daddy and um, even Rollo. And just like some of my Muslim friends, brothers, and just politicking with them and talking to them. And then I just decided to just convert over. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm still learning everything. Lil Dirk is a Muslim. Now that, now that you are a Muslim, yeah. are you prepared... To make it, he needs to be prepared yeah. also to have that unit. What, what do you think about in that regard? I love a lot of brothers for the sake of a lot, man. I ain't really stressing with cousin got in or out the door though, cause I ain't. Uh, some people y'all think that some Muslims go through something, see this person, that person, they got this going on with each other, and of course in front of other Muslim brothers they go, all right, for the sake of a lot, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't think if, some people accept the hellfire? Like man, I gotta get him. Don't no, matter. but listen what I'm saying. Cause when I go see Jerry, we gonna say that for the bro woke up one morning and i was like damn they got me man look at the shit i spoke about look at the shit i put in these people ears man i felt that wrong about a lot of things i mean that i actually am responsible for when it comes to my music put this shit in their ears and actually it hurts someone and now i'm sitting there like damn i can't do it all in one day but i promise to clean whatever i can clean but it's gonna take time and that brings us full circle back to the gas station in August of 2019 when Quando Rondo's cousin got murked, which we now know was the result of an alleged murder for hire plot that was allegedly cooked up by Little Dirk because him and his other OTF boys want to get back for the murking of King Vaughn. Oh my goodness, you know what? I don't even know what to say because if you really look at this, I mean, you really look at this from the origins, King Vaughn is gone and Little Dirk is now in jail for attempted moita all because King Vaughn told NBA Youngboy that he's not as tough as he portrays himself to be on his records. Oh my goodness. Once again, you got multiple people deleted in the streets, some of them innocent, because a bunch of mamsy pamsy, overly emotional, soft day rappers are out here escalating beef because they can't take reading a few unflattering tweets. Oh my goodness, unbelievable. Listen, Kenneth Cole jumps on his channel and like disses me like once a week, but you don't see me going out and getting a gat. He's like, yo, source, your political views are whack. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and then we go on about our own business. But for some reason, these wannabe hard rock thugs who jump on a mic swearing up and down that they're real ninjas are out here acting like overgrown children who start crying on the playground anytime somebody says one thing that hurts their little feelings. 
I mean, if you can't take a diss, then don't get into the rap game. UTFO dissed Roxanne Shantae, Harden and King Vaughn dissed NBA Youngboy, and KRS-One dissed MC Shan, Harden and Quando Rondo dissed King Vaughn. But you didn't see any of them running out in the middle of the street, throwing hands, or pulling switches. Why? Because verbal sparring and dissing each other is part of hip-hop, which we just saw in the back and forth between Kendrick Lamar and Drake, aka Geppetto. Now, although I'm not a fan of Drake, I will give him this. After Kendrick Lamar got on that diss track, or the many diss tracks that he dropped, and called Drake every name but a child of God, Drake didn't go get a strap and come back and try to murk Kendrick Lamar. He simply went into his corner, curled up in fetal position, and cried. <laughs> now, here we have a situation where one 24-year-old black man is unalive. Another 26-year-old black man was unalived in the middle of the street. One 21-year-old black man spent several months in jail, and now six other black men may spend the rest of their lives in jail or maybe even get the death penalty if found guilty because of a 20-second Instagram live post. I mean, come on, what are we doing here? What has hip-hop devolved into, and when are we as a hip-hop community gonna be like, yo, this right here is abnormal? And the craziest and saddest thing about it is that dudes like Lil Durk and Quando Rondo are actually natural leaders who could be leading black men and other men in the right direction, but no. Listen, to all my young black men out there, and you know what? This also applies to black women too. Do you not understand that it's a form of a mental illness to wake up every day plotting and planning and contriving ways to destroy someone else? Because when you set your sights, your scopes, and your targets on destroying somebody else, you're actually destroying your own self and your own soul in this life and the life hereafter. Because you have to remember that Proverbs 16.32 says, He who is slow to anger is better than a warrior and he who controls his temper is greater than one who captures a city. Hold up, let me say that one more again. He who is slow to anger is better than a warrior and he who controls his temper is greater than one who captures a city. Now, I'm really hoping beyond hope that Little Dirk doesn't really have anything to do with this murkin' for hire plot and the attempted murkin' of Quando Rondo because if he did and he ends up spending the rest of his life in a 6x6 six six cell or he ends up getting a needle, his rags to riches story is gonna go down in history as one of the saddest stories ever told in hip hop because all we're gonna be able to say is once upon a time there was a rapper named Little Dirk who was full of potential but he threw it all away over a petty beef that started over a social media post. The end. Listen, let me know what you guys think about Little Dirk getting arrested with five other co-conspirators for the attempted murkin of Quando Rondo. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. And while you're down there leaving a comment, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Hey yo, thanks for tuning in to The Source, your source for celebrity news. Peace.